So just a short video today. After my last video where I compared the Emberlit wood burning stove against the Nimblewell Nomad Little Dandy wood burning stove, I received a number of comments from people that were interested in making the Little Dandy. Uh, they did have some trouble getting to the page on the website uh, where the uh, template is, but I think that's been rectified now. Hopefully the, the link is there. But uh, I received one comment from a person, a new friend of mine on YouTube, and of course that's Lonnie from Far North Bushcraft and Survival. And Lonnie made some very accurate observations about the little dandy wood stove that uh, I thought I'd like to share with you. And Lonnie said he, of course, made one. He had made a, found this wood stove a number of years ago and tried it out. And he commented that uh, he had trouble keeping the fire alive, or at least there was a lot of work trying to keep the fire alive. And we, uh, we discussed this and we determined that it may have something to do with the shallowness of the, uh, or the low height of the device itself and, and how it doesn't really promote good draft through the device. So in the course of our conversation, uh, I had mentioned that I had played around with a few other designs after I had noted very much the same thing. And uh, I promised that I would uh, show him that design. Now, please don't laugh. This is amateurish to say the least. But I think it is a proof of concept and something that could be built upon for a better design. So what it is, it's another sheet metal contraption made of very lightweight 22 gauge or even 24 gauge sheet metal. Uh, that's about all the, the, the heavier metal I can work with, the tools I have at home. It would be nice to work with some heavier metal. And I think if I was able to work with some heavier metal or even some stainless steel, I think this might be a design that's worth looking into for a lot of people. So if you look at this, you're going to notice some immediate similarities to another design that's very popular and very well thought out. And I think, although I don't own one, it's something that uh, I hope to add to my collection in the future. And of course, that's the firebox stove. And the newest generation of firebox stoves seem to have incorporated a lot of the best features from other wood stoves. But when I looked at the firebox stove, one of the things that struck me that I believe makes it more efficient than many other designs is its height. And I think the height adds to a chimney effect and it pulls air in through the bottom and up through the top and it creates more of a, a force of air coming up through. And I think that combined with a good airflow at the top um, is what allows it to be a very efficient stove, or at least one of the, one of the components of making it an efficient stove. So I wanted to borrow on that concept, but still, it's not something I could replicate in terms of the hinges, not, uh, not easily, and my, my idea at the time was to uh, keep it simple kind of a process. So superficially, it does have some of the look of the firebox stove, but I'm going to give you some close-ups in a second, and I'll show you how it differs from the firebox stove. Uh, I, not to say it's better by any means, but uh, uh, simpler maybe is probably the better word for it. But one of the things you can see right from the here is that it's very open on both sides. And uh, that's one of the things I wanted to see if it would uh, create a better airflow through, it, through the device. And it does. Now I'm going to use this half a dozen times because uh, being such light metal, it, it's very prone to warpage. So again, it'd be nice if I could build it with some heavier metals. But I'm going to give you some close-ups now and uh, then take it apart and show you uh, the basic design. Now if this is something that you're interested in, I will uh, see if I can't uh, make a template for it and then make that available for people. Um, I think probably once you see the design, you won't even need a template. It's something you could probably draw it yourself and improve upon, I'm sure. Uh, there's a lot of things I'd do differently now, even just looking at it as I hold it in my hands. But I'm going to set this down and then give you some close-ups and uh, see if it's something that you might be interested in making for yourself. So again, it's a very simple design made of five pieces of sheet metal, or five uh, made from, I think, one huge piece of sheet metal, but uh, cut into five separate components. And I'll disassemble it in a second to give you a bit more detail on that. But what you can see is you have a plate in the bottom that is perforated with holes for airflow. And on both sides, there's a gap underneath which will allow the air to be pulled in from underneath and it's about an inch, maybe an inch and an eighth high. Now because of those perforations and the, the risk of ash falling through, I do have a, a tin foil plate that I'll put underneath it just to catch the ashes, especially when I'm on a surface that's questionable. Now here on these granite rocks I wouldn't have too much of a concern for it, but uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's good to carry that along just in case. It is not quite five inches wide, and I'll give you some of the specifications in the uh, description below. By not quite three inches, by about seven, maybe eight inches. Now you'll notice that there are extra slots on three sides. And what that allows me to do is to assemble this with that bottom plate raised to a higher level. And then I can drop in a Trangia stove and get that magical one and a half uh, inch gap or headspace between the top of the, the Trangia stove and the top of the uh, this stove here. Now, a couple of pieces of metal. And I can set smaller uh, bottle cups on it, or the military canteen cup, the GSI bottle cup, smaller cups like that I will sit on there without falling through. The holes all down through the side allow me to drop a bottle or a can, uh, you know, a full uh, Nalgene bottle or a clean canteen down inside a little closer if I want to. Um, also providing some wind protection as well. So a very simple design. Uh, I found this to be truly effective, but again, as I said, it's uh, flimsy. It's probably the best. Now I'm going to take it apart and show you the, the panels individually and show you one of the things that I do differently now. So really, it doesn't get much simpler than this. Just five pieces of sheet metal. Now, one of the things I would do differently, if you look closely, the tabs on each piece, the slots in the tabs are running in the same direction, opposite of the tabs on the smaller side pieces. So the two larger pieces, consider them the front or the back, and the two smaller pieces, consider them the, uh, the sides, if you will, uh, the tabs are running in the same direction. You know, knowing what I know now, on each panel, I would have reversed the slots in the tabs. That way, when it was assembled, it would be a uh, hold together better, similar to what a, a um, Emberlet stove is designed like. So that's one of the things I would change. Another thing I might consider now is uh, this is a top feed stove. So there, there is enough of a gap, an inch and a half at the top, that allows me to drop sticks in and they'll all drop into the coal so that the fire will burn vertically up, this, up the sticks quite efficiently and quite fast. But one of the things I might do differently is on two sides I might actually, at this point here, create a, an opening, maybe uh, an inch by an inch and a half, on the two wider panels and uh, then I'd be able to feed sticks in from the sides, or at least the two, uh, the wide panel and the narrow panel, so I can cross the sticks over. That's a feature I would borrow from the new second generation firebox stove to see if I can make this more efficient for using longer sticks so I don't have to process them down into smaller pieces. But yeah, simple design, very inexpensive. Uh, it could be made better, certainly could be made better. And if you have some better materials, I think that this is a design that is some good work for a classable, small, lightweight, uh, compact stove for taking out into the woods. All right, Lonnie, I hope that explains uh, my design, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.